Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing my Jane Austen July TBR and telling you about all the things that I'm planning on reading for Jane Austen July. If you don't know, Jane Austen July is a month-long readathon hosted by me and Marissa from Blatantly Bookish, which is all about celebrating Jane Austen. There are seven challenges, it's all very exciting, and today I'm going to be telling you about what I'm planning on reading for the readathon. If you would like to find out more about the readathon and get some more recommendations for the challenges, I will link down below my announcement video and also Marissa's, where we have plenty of recommendations for all of these challenges. But now let's get into what I'm planning on reading. So, my Jane Austen July TBR this year is a little bit smaller than I think it has been in previous years. This is mostly because I don't currently have access to libraries. The libraries are all now shut because of coronavirus. Um, it's possible that libraries in the UK might open during July and if they do I might end up picking up some other things that aren't on this list but usually I would get a few books at the library for a readathon like this um, and I can't at the moment. However I do have lots of books that I'm very excited to get to. So the first challenge is of course to read one of Jane Austen's six novels. I have read all of Jane Austen's novels before but I absolutely love rereading them. Me and Marissa are hosting two read-alongs of Jane Austen books this month. From the 1st to the 17th of July we are going to be reading Emma and then from the 18th to the 31st of July we're going to be reading Pride and Prejudice. I'm so excited to reread both of these. I'm very excited to reread Pride and Prejudice because it is my favourite Jane Austen book and I love it very much. I'm probably going to be listening to this on audiobook and be listening to the audiobook narrated by Rosamund Pike which is fantastic. It tells the story of the five Bennett sisters um, and their endeavours to get married and or find a place for themselves in the world. And then I'm also very excited to be re-reading Emma because Emma is my least read Jane Austen book. I've only read Emma twice and I've read every other Jane Austen book more than that so I'm really really excited to be reading this again. I haven't read it for more than five years I think um, so it's gonna be a real joy to reread this one. Um, this tells the story of Emma Woodhouse who um, lives with her father. She is very wealthy, she is very clever, she has no interest in marriage for herself but she does like to try and marry off her neighbours to each other. It's really really great fun. Um, I love adaptations of Emma very much and I did like the book the last time I read it but it's been a while so I'm really excited to reread this. Then the other Jane Austen novel that I might reread in July as well is Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park is my second favourite Jane Austen after Pride and Prejudice. I love it a lot. I have a really good audiobook of this narrated by Frances Barber so um, before I listen to the audiobook of Pride and Prejudice in the second half of the month I might listen to the audiobook of Mansfield Park in the first because I love it so much um, and I really really enjoy listening to to Jane Austen on audiobook. I find it especially funny and just thoroughly engaging so definitely looking forward to this as well. The second challenge is to read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. So for this I'm going to be rereading some of Jane Austen's Juvenalia. Um, I have some bit in this collection here and some bit in this collection here. I love Jane Austen's Juvenalia a lot. It is absolutely hilarious and very very silly and wonderful. Um, I'm hoping to make a video um, relatively early on in Jane Austen July about her Juvenalia so hopefully I'll read these fairly early on in the month. Her juvenilia is very entertaining and yeah I'm really excited to talk about it in a video because I think it's very underrated and very good fun. But I am also planning to reread her letters this month as well for this challenge. Um, I have read this collection of letters before but not for about five years. I loved Jane Austen's letters when I read them last. They are very very funny but also very moving and also give a lot of like really interesting details about the time period. So I think these are going to be really good fun and I'm looking forward to rereading them as well. The third challenge is to read a non-fiction book about Jane Austen or her time. So my main pick for this is this. This is Jane Austen the Banker's Sister by E.J. Cleary. I'm really excited for this and I think this should be a really interesting read. This is a biography of Jane Austen but it's focused on her relationship with her brother Henry who for some of his life worked in banking and I think it looks at their relationship and their friendship but also at how Henry's understanding of economics um, and his working in the financial field affected Jane Austen's understanding of finance and economics as well. So I think this is going to be a bit different and really really interesting. I'm really excited for this one so I really hope that it's as good and as fascinating as I'm hoping for it to be. I think it could just be a really really interesting one. Um, it's also not too long actually, it's only 300 pages so I think I definitely should be able to get to this relatively early on in the month. I'm really really excited for it. Then I have another pick that is sort of half of this challenge but I think it's a bit of a cheat for this challenge. So I'm going to read Jane Austen, The Banker's Sister, for this challenge, but there is another non-fiction book I'm hoping to pick up during Jane Austen July, which may or may not count for this challenge. I don't know. Um, this is Courtiers by Lucy Worsley. I love Lucy Worsley. Um, I think she's a fantastic historian, and I really loved her biographies of Jane Austen and Queen Victoria. And I think this should be a really, really interesting 
Jane Reed. So the subtitle of this is The Secret History of the Georgian Court. Jane Austen obviously did live in the Georgian period, but I think, though I'm not completely certain, it's not clear from the back, um, but I think this book mostly focuses on George I and George II. George II died in um, 1760, which was 15 years before Jane Austen was born. So this isn't exactly about Jane Austen's time, but it might go into George III, I'm not sure, in which case it would be about Jane Austen's time, and also what happened in the first half of the 18th century obviously it did have a big impact on Jane Austen's life, so I do feel like it's background information to Jane Austen's time period and relevant to Jane Austen's time period. So I haven't decided whether or not I really count this for this challenge, but I'm going to try and read it this month um, and I think it should be interesting to learn a bit more about the Georgian period. My sort of general knowledge of history starts at like 1789 and my historical knowledge from the French Revolution onwards is really really good and my historical knowledge from the French Revolution backwards is not great. So I think it should be a really interesting read. Fourth challenge is to read a retelling of a Jane Austen book. So again, I have like a proper pick and a half pick for this challenge. My proper pick is What Kitty Did Next by Carrie Cablean. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling slash sequel following the life of Kitty Bennett after the novel ends, which I'm hoping should be really interesting. I really loved The Other Bennett Sister, which I read earlier this year and which followed Mary Bennett, who is, you know, one of the least important Bennett sisters in Pride and Prejudice. And Kitty is the other kind of unimportant um, slash less important Bennet sister so I'm hoping this will be an interesting read. And then there is another book that I'm hoping to pick up this month which isn't a Jane Austen retelling but I feel like it's sort of partially Jane Austen inspired um, and that is To Have and To Hoax by Martha Waters. This is a recent novel that came out earlier this year. I've heard really great things about it. It is a rom-com but it happens to be set in the Regency period which I think should be really interesting and really great fun. It's not a Jane Austen retelling, it's not related to Jane Austen but it is set at the time that Jane Austen was writing and I feel like any Regency rom-com is going to be partially Jane Austen inspired so it's not really my pick for this challenge but I'm hoping to read it this month um, and yeah I'm really looking forward to it I think it should be really good fun. Then the fifth challenge is to read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen, so another author who was writing at the time that Jane Austen was. So I have a few picks for this. One thing I'm really hoping to read, which I'm determined to get to this Jane Austen July, which was on my TBR last Jane Austen July and I did not get to, is The Castles of Athelin and Dunbar by Anne Radcliffe. I've been meaning to read something by Anne Radcliffe for ages because she was a really important and influential late 18th century Gothic novelist who Jane Austen kind of satirises a bit in novel Anger Abbey um, and this was the shortest of her books that I could find so I thought that would be the one that I would read. I have this on my Kindle and hopefully I will actually get to it this month. And then the other um, book from Jane Austen's time that I'm hoping to pick up this month um, is Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth. Mariah Edgeworth we know was one of Jane Austen's favourite authors and I haven't read anything by her before. In general I don't have a great track record with getting on with books from the time of Jane Austen and before. To be honest Jane Austen is the only novelist I have encountered from before the Victorian period who I have loved, but I am determined there must be someone from the 18th and early 19th century that I really like apart from Jane Austen, so you know, maybe it will be Mariah Edgeworth. Um, and then the other thing I'm hoping to read for this challenge is some poetry by um, William Cooper. He was one of Jane Austen's favourite poets, um, she quotes him a lot in her works, um, I think especially in Mansell Park there's quite a lot of like um, references to Cooper, I think Fanny Price really likes him. So I'm hoping to try and read some Cooper if I can find some free Cooper poetry poetry online somewhere um, or on Kindle. So hopefully I will manage to read some um, poetry from the time of Jane Austen too, which should be good because actually I've had better luck with poetry from the time of Jane Austen than I have with novels from the time of Jane Austen. I like people like William Blake and William Wordsworth, so hopefully William Cooper, all the Williams, will be a good one as well. So those are all of my reading plans for Jane Austen July, but there are two other challenges which are both watching challenges. The first one is to watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. So I might play this one by ear slightly. I think there's one thing I'm definitely hoping to watch during Jane Austen July and that is the 2005 Pride and Prejudice adaptation. I really enjoy this one and I haven't watched it for ages and also Pride and Prejudice is one of the only Jane Austen books that Nick has read so that means we can watch that one together. Um, and then on my own I might potentially try and watch a Sense Sensibility adaptation. The 2008 one is my favourite. I think I've seen every like direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book from the last like 25 years. So there might be some older ones that perhaps I need to investigate, um, but I definitely have a few favourites and I know what they are and hopefully I will be returning to them this Jane Austen July. And then for watching a modern screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book, I have a few things that I want to watch, 
basically all of the YouTube web series. Um, I'm really enjoying the YouTube web series form of Jane Austen of retellings. Um, I really love From Man to Would Love and the Lizzie Reddit Diaries, Northbound, Emma Approved. I think they're fantastic. So a few that I'm hoping to watch this Jane Austen July. One is Eleanor and Mary Ann Take Barton, which is an adaptation of Sense of Sensibility, which I've heard great things of. Um, and then the other is the Kate Morland Chronicles, which is another Northanger Abbey adaptation, which I think should be interesting. And then the other thing Thing that I'm hoping to watch, which is another web series, which sounds bonkers, but kind of wonderful, is The Jane Games, which I gather is a YouTube web series, mini series, where they make Jane Austen books into some form of pretend reality TV show, which is hosted by Jane, and then the six like contestants are all Jane Austen characters. I know Marissa has watched some of it, and she found it enjoyable but also sort of awful and inaccurate but hilarious at the same time. So I'm very curious. I watched the trailer um, and it looks very funny and very weird. I have a giant bone to pick with it already in that it has heroines from all of Jane Austen's books, um, but they took Marianne instead of Eleanor from Sense Sensibility, which I feel is kind of... I, I think Eleanor is the real hero, um, but I think it's fair enough to pick Mary Ann. But from Mansfield Park, they did not take Fanny Price, they took Mary Crawford, and I really don't know how I feel about that, mostly anger. So I think this is going to be one of those things that I watch and I kind of love and hate it at the same time. Um, so this should be really entertaining. So those are all of my reading and watching plans for Jane Austen July. Please let me know down below in the comments if you're taking part and what you're planning on reading. I'm very, very excited for all of these Jane Austen related reads. And yeah, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.